All right, everyone, we are back. Thanks for sticking with us, and for those of you just joining us, or for those of you watching on YouTube, this is round two of Friday Night Magic from Lost Legion Games and Comics in beautiful downtown South Charleston, West Virginia. My name is Zachary Evans. I'm currently by myself here in the broom closet as we bring you commentary and coverage of this round two matchup. I will update the titles while I talk and do my best not to stumble in the process. On your left, Brandon Hodge. He played uh, last week... Um, on the feature match. He was playing a very aggressive Rakdos Zombie deck last week. He is audible into a very fun deck. He's, both these players are 1-0, but um, I think it's uh, his deck is a blue-white enchantment-based deck using Ethereal Armor uh, as, as a main win condition on Hexproof creatures such as Geist of St. Trap and... Um, uh, oh, what's the little guy's name? Invisible Stalker. Um, and pairing it with a big big bomb creatures such as uh, Silver Blade Paladin as well. So it's a very interesting deck. Should be fun to watch. On hit, on uh, across the table from him on your right, you are looking at Troy King. It's good to see Troy with us. Troy is uh, uh, used to play here all the time. He's off at college, uh, but he is in for the holidays and playing with us again. So we appreciate uh, him coming back to the area. He is playing uh, a Jun mid range deck. Um, I'm not sure exactly what his build has settled up on, but it's the usual suspects in terms of what you expect out of a Jun deck. So should be pretty interesting to watch here. A lot of removal from uh, from Troy's deck, but a lot of hexproof creatures from Brandon's deck. If you don't wait with me just a second, I'm going to step out and adjust the camera as we are a little bit off kilter here. Hopefully that improves things just slightly here. But again, these players are 2-0. This is round two. It says round one at the bottom, but that's because I'm bad at what I do. We'll fix that there. Five rounds tonight's tournament. 42 people still left in this. 41 people still left in this uh, tournament. So great turnout here tonight. So on to the action. As I've also forgotten to start the round clock. But... Um, We see turn two Invisible Stalker from Brandon. That's probably the best start that he could hope for. Oh, it looks like uh, Troy is splashing for white. I'm not sure exactly what that is as he taps out on turn three for Rakdos Kirun. Yep, just to clarify... Uh, just to clarify what's going on there, this is in fact round two. We did have two games covered in uh, round one because of the... Uh, the, the speed at which the first match ended. Um, so, And we see a curiosity come down on the Invisible Stalker. Like I said, uh, uh, Brandon's deck takes advantage of Ethereal Armor, pounds a lot of enchantments onto the board, and uses Hexproof Creatures to seal the deal. So we see a turn five Thrag Test come down for Troy, netting him three life as he had to bring in the Overgrown Tomb untapped. So Stalker getting in yet again. And we see Geist of St. Traft. Good in an enchantment deck. Good as a magic card, period. No gimmick necessary for that card. So Troy mulling over his options here. Looks like he's missing his land drop. So with five mana facing down a Geist. And an invisible snucker with curiosity on it. He is at 21. Again, I apologize for the uh, mechanics as I am running solo here today. Lingering Souls, at least the front half of Lingering Souls comes down. 
It's a very interesting deck. I actually played against Troy uh, Wednesday. We were playtesting a little bit, or at least jamming some standard games during our weekly Wednesday Night Legacy event. Um, and he was not playing white at all. So it uh, looks like he's, uh, he's altered this list a little bit to include uh, at least Lingering Souls. We'll see if he has any other white cards as the match progresses. So we see Ethereal Armor come down on the Invisible Stalker. And of course, pumping based on the number of uh, enchantments that uh, Brandon has in play. So that Invisible Stalker is now a 3-3 Ophidian. That will draw him a card every turn when it attacks. Spectral Flight comes down on the Geist, and this is getting ugly very quickly. I'm not sure if Troy has Bonfire in his deck, but he needs a Sweeper fast. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, plus... The Angel can't block the Stalker, obviously. We'll see what that ends up being uh, life-wise. Should be 1, 2, 3, 4. Should just be 4, knocking him down to 17. And there we see it is 4. A pretty brutal sequence of events out of Brandon's deck. Troy really up against it here. Finds a woodland cemetery. And we'll see if he found anything to deal with what is on board. Well, he's going to go pile in with the... Uh, make headway a little bit here with the Thrag Tusk. Knocks Brandon down to 15. He's going to flash back to Lingering Souls, which will buy him some time. Obviously, he doesn't jump blockers don't matter against the Invisible Stalkers. It's unblockable, but uh, each each half of Lingering Souls will buy him a turn against the now Spectral Flighted Geist and its Angel Token. Huntmaster hopes to sway the damage race. Gaining two, making the wolf. And again, I apologize for the glare as our new setup here. Like I said, 43 people started this event. That's a good problem to have when you don't have enough room for everyone. So we've added some tables since last week's 40-person tournament. We are in a new feature match location, and what I uh, what I, I had it sussed the glare pretty well over the last three months, but now I'm uh, starting over again. So hopefully we'll have that sorted by next week. But for tonight, at the bottom of the table, we will have to deal with a little in incidental glare. Untapped Hollowed Fountain for Brandon. Seems like he has a five mana play. Oh, he has Silverblade Paladin. Paired with the unblockable uh, Invisible Stalker. Another Spectral Flight on it. One, two. One, two. Three, four, five, six. Seven base. Double strike. Makes for 14. Makes for 14. Knocking, uh, sorry there, I got distracted slightly, but as we see, Troy down to seven here. Now, there are situations in which he can race, I guess, but um, he's going to need to gain some considerable life not to die on the crackback from this Invisible Stalker. Very difficult card for Troy's deck to deal with. Very difficult card for Magic decks to deal with, period. So, uh, getting a question in the chat about uh, whether or not he's playing Fencing Ace in this uh, blue-white deck. Uh, I, I do not know. I can find out for you after the fact, but uh, as of right now, I'm not sure if he's playing that or not. Seems like it would be a good inclusion. So, 
got a thinker here. Troy in a bit of a uh, bit of a conundrum. He has to kill that silver blade paladin, or he's facing down lethal. Well, he's got something up his sleeve, or he's just uh, swinging for the fences here and hoping Brandon makes some kind of uh, play mistake. I guess. Not sure exactly what's going on. Only leaving back six men untapped, and the Rakdos key rune. Yeah, there's a lot of discussion in the chat about the inclusion of Fencing Ace. I think this was included in a deck list online, so we will um, we will see. Uh, I'll step out here in a minute to figure out. I guess I hadn't really fi uh, realized the, uh, the situation here as uh, Brandon in a great spot here, obviously with the uh, impossible to deal with Invisible Stalker, but um, at a fairly uh, low life total himself, no, so Troy just does not have an answer for the Hexproof creature. Uh, so he drops the first game. Brandon Hodge takes it, moving up to 1-0 for the good with his blue-white enchantment stack. Uh, give, bear with me briefly. I'm going to step out real quick and find out uh, the answer to this uh, uh, fencing ace debacle. So we are back with very important information for our chat. He is not, in fact, playing Fencing Ace. Uh, not sure why exactly. I know he just threw this deck together for this event specifically. Tonight, this is the first time he's running it. He has been in the past, excuse me, playing Rakdos a Zombie. So he thought he would give this deck a try. He's uh, pretty amazed at how... What, what he calls a fun little deck uh, is doing, but this fun little deck plays uh, one of the most uh, broken limited cards in the history of Magic, an Invisible Stalker, uh, and the uh, three-format all-star that is Geist of St. Traff, so not surprising that this deck is doing pretty well. While we have a minute there, I do want to do want to bring up the fact that we are again at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia, hijacking their FNM once again. To bring it to you, our faithful viewers, if you can't make your FNM, come watch ours every Friday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We stream live at twitch.tv slash magic. if you're watching after the fact. On YouTube, make sure to check us out live if you can. If you're watching on Twitch right now, make sure to follow us. It's a little button right above the left side of the video window. Helps our numbers, but more importantly, they'll send you an email notification anytime our stream goes live. We've had a lot of discussion in the past few weeks about starting to stream our weekly legacy events. We've been getting anywhere from 16 to 18 people for those. Um, they've been a lot of fun, and uh, if we continue to get that kind of support and there is a desire, we will stream those events, or at least record them, so that we can put them up on YouTube after the fact. So if you have any feedback regarding that, please let me know. If you have any feedback in general, let me know. The best way to get in touch with this, follow us on our various forms of social media. If, uh, everything we have ever recorded, this is our 14th week of coverage of FNM and various other uh, magic-related activities. They are all uploaded to YouTube, youtube.com slash Magic. You'll notice a trend. Everything is Zach Sells Magic at every of all the various sites. So, uh, Star City Games Invitational Qualifier. We had the West Virginia State Championships. All ten rounds of that were streamed live with commentary, as well as our weekly FNM uh, Cube Draft, or uh, Return to Ravnica Launch Party Draft. Lots of cool stuff on there. Make sure you subscribe. You'll get uh, email notification anytime that uh, our sh uh, anytime we upload something new. I will also point out that in the last few weeks we have monetized our channel, um, and it is, uh, although modest, it is a good way of helping us financially recoup the costs of the equipment that we use for the stream. So if you could check out some of those videos, I'd appreciate it. You can follow me on Twitter, at ZachSellsMagic. I promise I won't bombard your inbox, but I do have uh, 
have a funny uh, quip every now and then to share with the greater magic community. But more importantly, you can win free stuff. We do a giveaway on Twitter every week, so make sure to follow me there. Most importantly, if, if you don't do any of the other things, make sure you check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash magic. Or if you go to zacksellsmagic.com, it will... You want to come in, Joe? Yeah. You're already done. Because I'm now joined... <coughs> excuse me, my Joe Lewis, but like I was saying... Facebook.com slash ZachSellsMagic or ZachSellsMagic.com will redirect you there. Um, that is our main website. That is the best way to communicate with us. I post something multiple times a day. Not spam. All good magic-related content to find out any information about events we have coming up, uh, deals the shop has going on. And if you wanted to find out what the Black Friday deals were, you just needed to go to our Facebook page. You could have got in on some of that hot action uh, today and also on Wednesday. But, yeah, go to there. Um, like our page, share it, and, and uh, comment on things. There's always a good dis good discussion. We discuss spoilers, deck, deck ideas, things like that. That is the best way to help support um, the stream in the sense that uh, it really helps spread the word. So check us out there. And then finally, if you're watching on Twitch right now, you obviously know where the stream is. But if you're watching after the fact, twitch.tv slash magic. that's how you can watch all of this nonsense live. Joe, you are uh, finished early. Yep. That usually means good things from you. Bad things from you? Bad things from me. I cannot beat a... Uh, Are you... Round one was turn one champion, turn two gather, mm. turn three, uh, sort of blade paladin. Are you 0-2 uh, then? I'm 1-1 one, one now. 1-1. One, one. You can come I, back. I am uh, very, very much uh, not sure about this deck. Right okay, now. so Joe, uh, Joe has played... Uh, well, Joe, is, you sat in last week on commentary. You've also played on the uh, feature match multiple times before. Joe is a fan of Reanimator and has been playing a junk version of that or a Frights version of that for the last, well, prior to rotation and now even after rotation. But you, uh, you, I saw earlier today you put together the Somber World Sage Crater Hoof Behemoth deck that did pretty well over the last weekend at various GPs. Not a fan. Uh, no, I actually play tested that a little bit before tonight and uh -huh. didn't like didn't like it. So I changed back to uh, my Frights build, and I'm not sure. Oh, so you were play you were play testing Frights, but you ended up going with. Uh, I was play testing the hook. There it is. And, and then ended up going back to Frights. Okay, uh, I understand. But then I'm still not quite sure of this meta because I'm having trouble with aggressive decks. And there and are a lot, a lot of aggressive, of aggressive decks, decks here. Tonight. Uh, it's so, like people are getting paid to play Rakdos in this room tonight. Yes. So I got beat by Green White because mm -hmm. I just had nothing for a champion. Mm -hmm. And then second game, I mulligan to Oblivion, and uh, mm -hmm. he came down for a turn one champion, turn two champion, Avacyn Pilgrim, turn mm -hmm. three Thalia, and uh, that was stopped my severed bloodline, and that was game. Well, yeah. So it's going to happen sometimes. It Let's talk a little bit here about what's going on in this match. Uh, for those of you just joining us, Brandon Hodge on the left, he's up a game with blue-white enchantments using the power of pump effects on guy on hexproof creatures to pound in for the win. Worked well for him in game one. Troy King, on the other hand, is playing a Jun midrange deck, but he's splashing white for Lingering Souls, which is a new addition to the list, which I think is pretty saucy. I uh, I like where his, where his head is at. Um, he's on the play, obviously. Should uh, should uh, have a much better go of it. Uh, last time, uh, last game, Brandon went turn two Invisible Stalker and just started loading up on uh, loading up on enchantments, and, and there was nothing that uh, Troy could find to answer it. Invisible Stalker is a annoying card. Yes, actually, any hexproof creature. Is and we saw a. Uh, Huntmaster get syncopated there? Yes, Huntmaster. I assume Huntmaster. It was a Huntmaster. No, I, I guess you're right. It could be something else, but I imagine it's probably well, Huntmaster, he played, too. Uh, he just played a promo Biobox Silverblade Paladin. Okay. Silverblade Paladin is what won him the first game. The only thing better than a Invisible Stalker with three enchantments and an Ethereal Armor on it is one that's paired with a Silverblade Paladin. Two turns later, the game was over. Troy had a pretty dominant board state, but he can't deal with the unblockable Hexproof. Yep. Vampire Nighthawk comes down, should help him at least uh, change the race math. Uh, and it does have the interesting interaction of still taking out a double striking Silverblade Paladin because it has three ass on it. Also getting comments in the chat, someone posted, for those of you live, if you scroll up a little bit, someone has posted a deck list to a very similar blue-white um, that was featured, I think, on the Mothership this week. Um, also getting questions about whether or not we have deck lists or where we can have access to those. Um, that's m 
basically a function of uh, people bringing them. And as much as I would appreciate it when people do it, um, there's nothing I can do to <laughs> to make people print out deck lists or compile them. Joe, you've provided deck lists in the past. We always appreciate that. But uh, obviously, um, that's not part of the F&M level of uh, you know, deck registration not required. And there are a lot of people here and not all of them are going to take advantage of that. I do try and get deck lists from people who are featured on the camera after the fact. Those will usually go up in the video description on the YouTube videos uh, and on our Facebook page. So we see an, a non-overload Mizium Orders take out. That's pretty good two-for-one there. Um, yeah, Ethereal. <laughs> Ethereal Armor does die. Yeah, so um, Troy in a much better spot here. I mean, his deck has tons of removal. It's just all about the hexproof creatures. The fact that he is playing mortars um, is good in the sense that it does not target, so it will help him take out some of those creatures, assuming they don't grow to disproportionate sizes, which are, are bigger than four. Uh, that's pretty good, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, Ms. Mortium, mortars and a lot of four has creatures that you want to get with mortars and this, mm -hmm. and then... Uh, then the creatures that are being played are bigger than four, mm -hmm. are just bigger than, like, five. They're, they're six or mm -hmm. higher. Uh, so we see stronger for those anyway. another Huntmaster attempted here. Yeah, it looks like it's going to resolve. That, that one sticks through. I think Brandon cited in Syncopates. He did want me to point out to everyone uh, on the Internet that he has three copies of Terminus in his sideboard. <laughs> I don't know exactly what he's expecting to do with those, but it is funny to see that in his all-hexproof creature deck. Yeah, so he's probably... Uh, when he wants to go to the mm -hmm. control Huntmaster. Yep, so uh, Huntmaster flips. So Brandon's an issue here if he does not have an answer for this Huntmaster next turn. Mm -hmm. He is going to take six from this attack, assuming he doesn't have any shenanigans. I see only I see only creature enchantments in his hand. So without anything to put him on, they are basically useless. And uh, no, uh, no uh, ink bomb nexus to uh, hook up real quick and just get that win. And then there's draw step does not help him. I'm not sure if there's anything he could have drawn in that situation that would have helped him. Well, if brought in the turn of the that could have... Yeah, it's true. Turn. I'm not... Don't know if it, he brought those in or not, but you are correct. That would have done the job. So Troy in his uh, Jun midrange splashing white for Lingering Souls gets one back, evens the match at one and one. Uh, trying to see if there's any... Uh, any pertinent discussions in the chat? Last week at this time, 170 people were watching us. So we're only 100 down from that point. But it is nice to see 70 people share the... It is the holidays, and it's very... You know, I was talking with Max Turner in round one, who had the buy and was uh, joining in on commentary. Uh, it's an interesting thing to try and predict whether or not the holidays will help or hurt. Because while the holidays do, you know, usually take people away from their homes and whatnot, of course this... Uh, only in the U.S., obviously, but uh, you know, it might also free up some people who might otherwise be doing something more, more productive or uh, something like that. And to all of our to all of our uh, domestic viewers, I wish them a happy Thanksgiving. Hope you've had a good holiday week with uh, copious amounts of food, friends and family. For those of you who are international or otherwise not celebrating Thanksgiving, happy Friday night or early Saturday morning, depending upon your location. <laughs> I, still, I mean, you could still hope you had a good week with friends, family, and the loads of food as well. That's not exclusive to uh, to Thanksgiving. Did you say five rounds or six rounds tonight? Five rounds tonight. Five. Yeah, last week we had 40... Last week we had 40 even. We ran six rounds. They chopped the top eight because it was almost one in the morning, and the top eight hadn't even started yet. I have... Uh, I told them all that I, what my opinion of that was, so. You thought it was good or bad? Uh, bad. It should at least play one round of it, just to say you actually played a round of top eight. Well, I had no opinion. Well, first of all, I have no stake in the matter. Second of all, I have no opinion because it was very late. There was a What's there right? was a convoluted uh, situation, convoluted set of circumstances that resulted in them. Um, uh, do, I mean, why the why the event ran so long? We probably ran an extra round than we absolutely needed to. But fundamentally speaking, with that number of players, you do need six rounds. But um, uh, you could get away with five rounds because uh, the, the the separation of the top eight is not much different between five and six rounds. Um, 
but we're also running longer round links than we normally do, which I don't really understand why, and that's what really ta attacked on an extra hour, basically. What, it? what are you running? You're running? 55 minutes. Uh, yeah, that's usually 40, 45. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing 40, 45 I think, uh, I think he's doing 45 tonight, and that adds an extra hour to the night. Yeah. I think if it had been mid midnight or 11.45, they would have played around, but it was a long night. And there was a lot of waiting around, too, because with 55-minute rounds, there's always one round that goes to the... one match that goes the duration, and you just have to sit around and wait for that. So, like, what happened to the jordan Pecchio match? You just, I just saw a cup the tail. Oh, on round one? Yeah. In round one, we had a very interesting bonus match at the end of the round. The first match ended quickly, so the second game we saw uh, jordan Pecchio playing five-color Super Friends. He lost 1-0. Uh, they didn't finish the second game, but he was going to lose the second game to Benjamin Gum, who was playing Grixis Control. Yeah, I saw the result of Pickle Bowls. Well, it, the game was... Came up to him like, oh, this is not good in Jordan. So the game was that. over a long time before that, as uh, Benjamin resolved uh, two separate copies of Slaughter Games, one he snapped back, took all of Jordan's attention for He has Dread Boar, Jordan doesn't, so... More importantly, back to the match. Game 3 starting here between Blue White Enchantments and Jun Midrange. Guildgate and Island and a go. Met by Woodland Cemetery and a tapped Blood Crypt. Lots of non-stop action. Fast-paced magic gameplay right off the start here. Well, I think the problem here is that um, Brandon has maybe inadvertently sided into a, a much more controlling deck. And he's drawing all of his control elements. He has two. Co he has a syncopate, and a th two copies of syncopate: a detention sphere, a silver blade paladin, and an ethereal armor in his hand. He has no. I mean, the silver blade paladin is fine, but silver blade paladin will just die to whatever. At this point, I think you just sit back on, on syncopate. If you got, if you're going to side in the syncopates, I would sit back on them at this point. So sit back, you catch something, and you come back and hopefully caught, hope you caught the tempo back. Yeah. I mean, you can you can desphere whatever he he um, he casts, or he can imperial armor his creature here. I think I imperial armor here and swing in. That way, I can leave a syncopate up for one for the uh, for the huntmaster. Oh, well, he's gonna—he's just gonna pound in damage. He's gonna and so he's gonna go. He's just gonna try and go yeah. aggressive here with it. I don't know if necessarily that's the right. I think you're right. I think you want to kind of keep. Uh, uh, you want to keep him in up in case of the pump master. He's showing. Yeah. And nope, sever. Sever the silver blade pile, and yep. yeah, two for one yourself a little bit. I mean, to be fair, the deck is not drawn... The way the deck is drawn up, he's not trying to jam enchantments on Silverblade Paladin, necessarily. And he draws a Spectral Flight. So he's just going to help to get some work out of these, um... Syncopates. Which the first one's going to catch a Huntmaster. If he had done the play we were talking about, he could have... He could have saved it, possibly saved the Paladin. Yeah. Uh, which would have been... Uh, considering he has, considering he has no other business. Yeah, providing pressure to Troy. Yeah. So, Troy's back. stuck. He's missing his fifth land here. I see another Huntmaster in his hand, which is going to eat another Syncopate. Oh! oh. Rakdos return for two? Uh, I mean... You so have to counter it. Well, how many cards Brandon got in hand? Two. He's got two cards in hand. So, yeah, you counter it. Gotta, <laughs> you counter it, you get a one. You so don't. It's, that was a it's an it's an effective. Uh, you know, it basically accomplishes what uh, what Troy wanted to do. Yeah. But uh, Troy said, "Mom, good good hand, good yeah. right If now. he draws a fifth land, the same strike test it's going to be difficult for Brandon to answer. Uh, get the other, get rid of the other one. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he brings those in. Of course, Brandon, that's not the worst card for Brandon to lose. Yeah. What was it? He lost uh, two copies of Spectral Flight. Be interesting to see what uh, talk to Brandon, see what he cited out, whether or not he has cited out aggressive cards. And the th no, there's the second Huntmaster. Very, uh, very no, interesting. Oh, the he did cite them in. How great is that? <laughs> Terminus off the top from the sideboard takes out 
Drew's or Troy's board, but he's just going to reload. There's a death right shaman. That's going to get some business. I think that's a main board card. I don't think he's citing that in necessarily against this deck. Just everybody's playing that now. Well, it's because it's a very good magic card. Anything with uh, three functional modes seems to be like a realistic card to to make its way into various decks. As you see Troy uh, decided to get himself to five mana with a far seat. Doing it the hard way. Doing it the hard way. I do want to apologize again. Everyone who's been watching since the start of the cast knows that uh, we are having uh, some glare issues at the bottom of the screen due to uh, a new location for the feature match area. It's amazing how shifting shifting a few feet over just completely wrecks our glare setup. Yeah, we'll do it on the we'll do it next week when I don't have to drive back in from my grandmother's house for, for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Two Thanksgivings this week. Uh, Troy Ponsons. Got no action from either player, but Troy has an active uh got the right Charlotte, which is gonna possibly wreck Brandon's world here. And he just drain, drain, drain. He's going to Golgari Charm using the oft overlooked Disenchant feature, taking out the Detention Sphere, getting his Vampire Nighthawk back. Seems pretty good. You're in a pretty good situation where you side in the Disenchant against the Enchantment deck, and you can target their O-Ring to get your own thing back when you're using it in an offensive manner. You're in a pretty good, pretty good situation. I don't know what uh, Troy attacks there with the Death Rite Shaman. I think he was tapped out, or he, play, he was going to tap out. Would you, yeah, I think that's a trade you'd make, right? Yeah, I guess, I mean, if, if you know uh, that Brand's not running anything, they can just spontaneously jump in front of the Death Rite Shaman right there. Yeah. Or, Old Fashioned O-Ring this time takes out Thrag Test. Still going to make a beast, but Nets 2 life. Brandon up against it here. Oh, I think Brandon now coming to the realization of Thrag Tusk's reads when it leaves play, not just when it dies, when it leaves play. The best card in Magic, once again rearing its ugly horned head. I hate Thrag Tusk. You know how much I like red well, cards. Let's, let's, I know you hate Thrag Tusk, but let's just say that this card, only reason it's seen this much prevalence of use is because Blaze Flyster is no longer in the format. True. Blade Splicer kept that card uh, down. I mean, we looked at it five mana for a five three to die. Well, it was still seeing play because it was seeing play in like Bant Blink decks that also played yeah. <laughs> Blade Splicer. So. <laughs> but it was a lot easier to deal with just by playing Blade Splicer, which yes. had a great interaction with Restoration Angel, obviously. So we see Curiosity come down on the Silver Lake Cloud, and maybe a little late here, but. Might as well put it on something while you have the opportunity. Looks like a dread boar. Nope. Mizium Wardens maybe? Nope. Dread boar. And that's it. As good as game one went for Brandon, uh, games two and three could not get there. Someone suggesting oh it's a uh, it's a stream regular, Ali Browning suggesting that in honor of uh, Thanksgiving. Each of tonight's giveaway winners should also receive an Absence Pilgrim, <laughs> which uh, I'm on board with that. Yeah, I think I think I might uh, take that into consideration and you should sign it. Pack that in. Uh, no, who should sign it? Who should sign it? The local le legend Adam Vickers should yeah, sign it. Yeah, absolutely, Adam Vickers. So, mm -hmm. what do you think, there, Chat? Would you? Uh, uh, I I think I think it'd be very unlikely that the chat knows who Adam Vickers is. I think a few dedicated fans would know, but um, you know what I've talked about. Do you want me to uh, troll around for a match for you? It might, it might be a little bit uh, late for that. We can go out and... Yeah, you, why don't you step out and see if you can I'll find, find one. something for you. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's worthwhile at this point, but if we can, would be good. So Joe's going to step out, see if he can find a game two or game three for you. We do have ten minutes remaining in the round. Looks like we're running uh, just slightly behind. But... Uh, I doubt that we're going to get another round on there, but we will come back with uh, round three shortly. In the meantime, let's talk about some giveaways. We just mentioned it in the chat. Every week we give it away. Yes, we're not playing Magic right now, but I'm trying to give you free crap. How do you start your games in Magic? Do you roll dice or do you flip a coin? This isn't the Great Depression. 
you aren't my grandparents. You should get with the program and start your games the way we do on our feature match with a play set of rock, paper, scissors cards from Unglued. Past winners have, include, uh, have included, um, and if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen the retweet that uh, it, the, the A-Team Magic Podcast member Jay Boosh, he won it previously. He received his cards yesterday. He was thrilled about it. You, too, can be thrilled about it. Are they worth a ton of money? Absolutely not. Are they worth a lot of sentimental value? Absolutely so. So if you want to win your own playset, it's simple. We give them away every week. You go to Twitter. Unless you're Joe Stewart. Or, or Joe, Joe Lewis. For some reason, I called you Joe Stewart. That's your alter ego. That's like your, uh, that's your alter ego. Joe Stewart. That's what, if you grow a goatee, then you go with Joe Stewart. That's yeah. your bizarre <laughs> Joe Lewis. You go to Twitter. Literally you follow me at Zach Sells Magic. Not only will you, uh, and then you, and then you uh, look for the tweet that I'll make here after this round. You retweet it. And you know what? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. What's that? Um, no, we're going to go ahead and do it this week. But I think next week I'm going to do it on Facebook. We've gotten a lot of complaints from people on on Twitter or about the Twitter giveaway that they want to do it on Facebook. And considering we get 50 people every week to do the Facebook one, mm -hmm. we'll do it. But for this week. Uh, go to Ad Zach Sales Magic. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, retweet the post as we're now joined by Brandon Hodge. Um, retweet that tweet that I'll make here at the end of this round, and you'll be entered for next week's drawing. Uh, and then we do give away other promos. Uh, later on in the evening, we'll do it uh, via Facebook. So make sure you stay tuned for that if you like free stuff. Thank you, Brandon. Is there a chair there you can grab, Brandon? Yeah. Sure feel, free, feel free to sit in. So, Brandon, unfortunately did not get there in games two and three of your match, but I do have, uh, we do have an interesting sideboard. I saw you did bring in the Terminus, and you brought in some Syncopates, or are those main? Those are main. Syncopates are main. Terminus is sideboarded. Um, it seemed like your games two and three, you drew all of your control cards when yeah. you wanted to be beating down. When I wanted, when I wanted to get creature threat in there. Yes, like you did three. not draw. How, you're playing, are you playing three guys? Yeah. Three yeah. guys to St. Trapped and all four... Um, Invisible Stalkers, Great. and saw none of them in any of the two sideboarded games. And Magic is a game of variance. Yeah, I mean, it's if luck wasn't involved, you'd win them all. Yeah. <laughs> the Phil, <laughs> Phil, 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 Phil Helmuth yeah. reference. Phil Helmuth draw but there. Uh, but a very interesting deck is just similar. The, the chat was talking about. There's a, I think there was a similar deck mentioned on Daily MTG this week. Um, a, a similar type of deck that's using Ethereal Armor. I genuinely didn't see the deck. Though. Okay, it, it, I mean, yeah. the, the card that they were asking about that was in that article was Fencing Ace. Have you ever, are you familiar with that? I actually am not. Okay, so let's bring that up. But everyone was saying that it seems like a good inclusion for uh, this. It does its best uh, core uh, duelist. duelist impersonation. The duelist was double strike. The core duelist was double strike when it was equipped, a yeah. one drop. We'll bring this bad boy up for everyone else to see. Uh, so it's a basically a double strike for two mana but basically makes all of your pump spells plus four, plus four, mm -hmm. give or take. So might be I mean, something to look at. I don't know. You might... I really like the direction that the deck goes. It's I like Silver Cannon. It really does. Well, it, it, it is very... It, yeah. it's, uh, you, if you draw your Hexproof Creatures against Troy's Jun deck that has infinite removal, if you draw the Hexproof Creatures, you're in great great position. Yeah. If you don't draw the Hexproof Creatures, your creatures are never going to live. I think what actually what I should have done maybe in game three, maybe in game two, was draw down until I see the Hexproof Creatures. I mean, or you might, or you might wait until you have a, you know, and I don't know if you can afford to do it against a deck like John that does have a quick clock once it once it gets down. But you might wait until you have, you know, f uh, five or six mana up, mm -hmm. play your creature, and then buff your creature in the same turn so he mm -hmm. can't respond with the sorcery speed removal. But even then, if you play your Silverblade Paladin put on a Spectral Flight or an Ethereal uh, Armor, it's still going to be within it's Mortar's Mizzy range. Mortar, yeah, yeah. Mizzy Mortar was the blowout in that match. Mizzy Mortar's very good. It's the best card that he has against you because I don't think he's playing Bonfires. Mm -hmm. But um, also very interesting to see the uh, oft-forgotten oft and unused Disenchant mode of Golgari Charm, yeah. which he brought in. Uh, Look, I had to read it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Golgari Charm is mostly used for... Is it the one that gives minus one, minus yeah, one to all creatures? So it's mostly a sweeper type effect. Uh, and then what's the last one? Is it uh, Torment Script? Regenerate. Oh, regenerate all your creatures, yeah. yeah. So he, he was bringing that in, effect. bringing that in mostly for the disenchant uh, ability. And the, the, but, it's very similar to the deck I played round one, and just, you know, the, the hexproof creature there, so it's not blowing out. The deck doesn't deal with hexproof creatures. Mm -hmm. so, well, it, he lost game one because he couldn't beat, 
he had, in just a typical race fashion, mm -hmm. he would have he would mauled you because mm -hmm. his board presence was so good, right. and you were at a relatively low light from from uh, some lingering souls attacks as well from some shock lands. But the fact that you couldn't he could never interact with your the invisible stalker. Invisible stalker. At, at the at the end of the game, it was seven seven double strike. Yeah. Last time I checked, and we have never claimed to be good at magic in the broom closet, but last time I checked, 7-7, seven, seven, double strike, unblockable, hexproof, pretty good? Pretty, 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 pretty good. good. Yeah. That's the that's question of the night. Pretty good or great? Is it banned or is it uh, blue-white? It's just blue-white. Yeah, that's what I was checking earlier. We'll see if it was banned. No, it's I don't necessarily know what I would run, what, what green cards I would run. Well, obviously, you have Grand Court is basically, the. I think that may be the only green card that banned runs me. Uh, that would be the only card I could think of a green at. Yeah. You just want to run with that. Yeah. If someone was talking about it, was, uh, it was on Daily MTG, but uh, uh, a little while ago. So, mm -hmm. um, and the, it the, the first bit of criticism I got from it was actually, why are you terminating, you know, in your sideboard? Because, you know, your entire deck revolves around those creatures. I mean, you look at game three, they're terminus on the last couple turns, and it's just, it's a new game. You know, we start over. But uh, Terminus actually just plays out so well on that deck because you can just well, pump again. Do you just uh, you bring in Terminus? You feel like you bring it in when you go and go ship to the control deck when you're on the the draw? Yeah, if I'm in the control fashion against you know a very aggro creature deck, something like that, you know Terminus is what comes in. I know Terminus is usually a reset against like mono red where it runs so many quick creatures. Your deck plays a little bit like a combo deck. Yeah. So you can side into that. There is one question. I don't mean to interrupt, but there is. Obviously, we were talking about our Rock, Paper, Scissors giveaway, which we'll draw for here in a second. You guys can be a part of that. But um, someone is saying that, someone is concerned that you can manipulate those. Uh, but a shady opponent can manipulate the Rock, Paper, Scissors cards to determine who goes first. While I'm not saying that they can't be manipulated, there's a very easy way around this. And we talk about this all the time. This is the pro style of using rock, paper, scissors. You shuffle them up, present them to your opponent, and then he picks for both of you. You don't physically touch the cards. That's a very easy way around it. I have used those cards at Grand Prix before. If you feel more comfortable rolling dice, obviously feel free to. I'm not advocating that everyone change the way that they start Magic Game. But uh, in a perfect world, everyone would use rock, paper, scissors. Exactly. Let's roll for this giveaway. All right. Because yeah, we got a few minutes left before the round starts. So keeping me on task. Okay, so tonight, uh, like I said, Twitter giveaway. We'll do one more Twitter giveaway for the upcoming week, so participate in that tonight. After the round, I'll send the tweets that you need to retweet to enter for a chance to win 18 runners tonight. It was 18 after I eliminated all the spam. Uh, There's about two or three spam accounts that were clearly not uh, <laughs> magic-related. The, the, uh, there's a very good chance, I'd say 99% chance, that if the avatar for a Twitter account is a very attractive woman in a low-cut shirt, yeah. a spam account. Spam and so three of those were participating. Apparently spam spam bots really want to win unglued cards. So 18 people Brandy participating. Would you like to roll this d20? I, I sure will. If it's a 19 or 20, we will re-roll. I, I cannot confirm this because it is on the table, but he rolled a seven. seven. It is seven. Uh, and that is someone who's, uh, uh, the winner is the Count. I forget what his actual name is, but uh, he's, a, he's one of, I think his name is Earl something. But he follows us on Twitter, he follows us on Facebook. They're actually trying to do a similar uh, recording operation at their own uh, uh, LGS. So congratulations to him. Uh, we will send that out to him in the coming weeks, or at least after I reload. Well, I have one for this week, but next week i got to reload. I'm running out. I've given out 14 sets. So, uh, so. Has it been that many weeks? This is the 14th week. 14th week. 14th week. The reason I keep track of it is because every week I do a highlight of the week where I chop down a particularly fun or exciting uh, moment from the FNM of the previous week. Uh, and uh, I always had to go back and check and see what week it is because I archive it like that. Um, also, I remember it because last week we also had our first ever low light of the week, <laughs> which uh, I'm not even going to describe it. It was just funny, funny change of events. So go to our those are always uploaded to our Facebook page. I'm telling you, you go to Facebook page. Joe, can you not confirm that there is legitimate magic content on there the is, Facebook page? There's all kinds of content. It is not just there. me begging uh, for uh, likes and viewerships and money. Oh, no, he, he keeps up with uh, daily uh, breaking news in magic community. Deck lists come up. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, there is a healthy uh, community being built on there in terms of information sharing and mm -hmm. deck, licks, deck building uh, with it as well, too. So if you want to join the Hive Mind, uh, it is a great place to go and start getting in on your local gaming community if you are in this region. It is a must. We do hear uh, time has been called out there, so we will have about five minutes here of uh, 
killing time. Yeah, someone bringing up one of our, our... It's funny, this is funny how it works, that there are people... Some of you have been watching with us since day one. It's fun to see the regulars keep coming back. This one particular individual uh, in, this, in the chat that we talked about already tonight, watching from Australia, watches while he raids on WoW. Uh, and he... Uh, oh, you do have... Okay. Oh yeah. Oh no, I appreciate it. Thanks. I am here by myself tonight, so there is a. I've encouraged people to come back. Is it? But he's mentioning that uh, he he remembers the low light of the week. I called it uh, ultimate price tusk. <laughs> You'll have to just see what that means. Go to facebookcom magic and look for that. I thought it was pretty funny. I had a good. Uh, if you watch my reaction during the movie, uh, during the video, I had a good time. Uh, but. Uh, um, have you seen the uh, have you seen the low light of the week? Double the price test. You should look it up. It's uh, I it's definitely check. Definitely. Someone talking about um, I even wish people happy birthday. Yeah, so this is what happens. If you like our Facebook page, which really is very rewarding to me. We don't ask for any kind of financial compensation, although you can do that if you feel so inclined. That's at the bottom of our Twitch stream. Um, I set that up from people requested that, so I set that up. But uh, liking our Facebook page and stuff like that, it's very validating. It means that you know what it's good to see some, some positive feedback like that. But uh, when someone likes our page, I add them as a friend, personally, uh, because that way I can uh, message them directly and stuff like that. Um, some people decline, so it doesn't break my heart. But when people do accept, I always send them a message, talk to them, find out how they found out about the stream, I chit-chat with them about feedback, see what, uh, you know. There's a lot of people that I've met through this that, like, live in all corners of the world or whatever. And when it pops up and says it's your birthday, I wish you a happy birthday. Because that's the kind of, of <laughs> quality, and that's the true mean. That's the true meaning of, of streaming. I mean, we're getting we're getting the Christmas season. You compare that to say a Star City game stream. When's the last time you heard Star City Games wish one of the people that liked their page? Everybody? All they're going to do is charge you more money for it. Exactly, exactly. We're going to charge you forty dollars per birthday shout out. Yes. I shouldn't I shouldn't downgrade Star City Games because <laughs> they run a very immaculate stream. But uh, so that is one thing. If you want to get birthday wishes from me, facebook.com slash Zach Sells Magic or Zach Sells Magic. Com, it will redirect you there. That is our main uh, way of communicating. I do encourage you to do that. Remember, the Twitter giveaway will be shortly. And the Facebook giveaway, we're giving away uh, copies of Cathedral of War promo. It's a good card. It's like five or six bucks. Not as good as Restoration Angel, but I'm not made of money. Not made of money. Uh, generously donated by the uh, shop manager, JB. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Roberts, one of the best shop managers in this area. Uh, the best. Yeah. I would argue the best, the best in terms of in terms of uh, how hospitable and uh, personable he is. Um, so uh, as always, we, we the people who've watched in the past will know this, but for those of you just joining us, anytime we're in the studio, feel free to jam some questions into the chat as we continue to kill time. I don't have much prepared this week. I was going to talk about some of the uh, sales that we've done here. Um, if you are local to the area or regional at least, you should get down here, take advantage of some Black Friday deals. Ten percent off the store. Buy three, get one free on most sealed product, $95 boxes. Seems like a good deal, so if you're looking to buy Christmas presents and whatnot. Uh, th this is a good point when we talk about uh, if you are looking to get MTG-related presents for people, that I always get for birthday or for Christmas or whatever, I inevitably get a magic-related gift from someone. And it is usually the worst possible magic-related thing <laughs> because people who don't play magic don't understand what's good. Oh, but thanks, they're Mom, Vizzer, yeah, this they, they, uh, they are... But there are some, some, some products out. Last, last week we talked about the holiday box that was just released, the $20 card storage box. It comes with four packs, uh, dividers, some stickers to customize it. Um, I think we sold out of those the night that we got them. I, those, I would say that probably if you are looking for... That is the absolute perfect gift. That is the best if thing. anybody... If because it, it comes all twenty dollars is that. a great price point. The storage box is functional. You can bring that. You can put all your decks and your and your trade fodder and stuff, and your playable commons and uncommons. You can carry that with you in your backpack. Is that get, size? You get four packs, which all Magic players yeah, love. Yeah, you get to crack packs. some packs. You get to play that lottery. And Always a good time. You get a shiny. You get a, yeah. You get a shiny. That's what my wife calls it. That's what Joe calls it. Yeah, Dreg Mangler promo. Play very playable. Mm -hmm. Oh, card. Yeah, very so that's uh, that's highly recommended from us here in the room closet. The uh, Return of Ravnica holiday box. And I think uh, the last time I saw, he has two of them out there right now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so if you want to get want to get in on that, do that. Um, I don't know if there's any other necessarily uh, specific holiday things or themed, but uh, well, fat packs are always good. Fat pack. I love the box. Fat packs. Are I would just buy the box. The Ravnica one is very good. Yes, and he, uh, JB does sell uh, the individual fat pack boxes. You know why he has so box. many of those? Because people turn them in after they get the packs? No, because I am, I have a secret supply chain of fat pack boxes. Oh, so I always oh. bring them in and sell them to JB. 
and then he flips them immediately and makes a sweet profit on it. Yes. Those, I love those things. I keep okay. my cube in them. I have a bunch of them at home. Fat pack boxes are good. And again, fat pack box, fat pack box. You get a storage box, which you can always use. You get some sealed packs of magic cards. You get a spin down counter. Those are things that can you can be used. So I don't know why I'm telling you guys, the uh, faithful viewers. You obviously know. People are supposed to be buying you stuff, not yeah, uh, you buying stuff, other yeah. people's stuff. Yeah. But it seems like a good way of uh, spending your some money. Um, it's getting very loud out there. We're getting some comments about my beard, which uh, I always like to see. If you think it's uh, if you think it's uh, sweet now, come see me in about four months. Yeah, if you're watching on the str if you're watching on the Twitch feed, if you look at the background image all the way on the right, there is a picture of. Uh, me from last year's beard growing season. I want to confirm this right now. Uh, your splash page on the uh, Zaxxel's Magic. Yeah, com. right there, right at yes. the right side of the uh, chat. On the right side, if you look at the Zaxxel's Magic, uh, or on the splash page here on the Twitch, this is the Twitch feed, right? Yes. Uh, on the Twitch feed, uh, off to the right hand side, uh, you will see you're sitting there with the That's an uh, April Grizzly beard. Adams. That's an April beard. Yeah. You know, and, and not to answer one of the questions I had on the uh, stream here. No, we're talking about my beard, Brandon. You know I have what? time to answer questions. <laughs> so, anyway, from somebody who cares about your questions. Sure. From Roanoke to the store is three hours and 32 minutes, says Google Maps. Nice. Well, thanks for that. Um, yeah, I, I have some friends that live in Roanoke. Like I said, we've got a contingent going down tomorrow from the store, apparently playing in a uh, Star City Games Invitational Qualifier at the home store down there. So that's going to be a fun trip for them starting at 6 in the morning. Oh, yeah. I will be sleeping in and doing a whole lot of nothing tomorrow yeah, exactly. because it, uh, I am exhausted. It's a funny thing about holidays. Like, you, you get days off. Like, I was off all week from work, and I have to go back to work to take a break. You know what I mean? Between all the travel and all the activities and stuff going on. Yeah, As Garrett, uh, Garrett Meadows gave me a grief earlier, he says, it's first world problems, obviously. Yes. Oh, no, I ate too much and traveled too much and saw my family too much. Yeah, I know. It's a tough it life I live. But still... Still, I just want to sit on my couch, watch my TiVo. I got like five episodes of American Horror Story backed up. Are you not watching the new season? Uh, no, I have been, but I'm backed up like three you. seasons. It's very good. I can recommend that show, American Horror Story. Have what else have we talked that? about tonight? I got I got to update my my recap list. Oh, Altered Prince. I need to figure that out too. Uh, we'll have to talk about this at the end of the next round. This is the second round in a row I've done this, but um, uh, alteredprince.com. Jordan Pecchio uh, mentioned them last week. They do altars of cards uh, via, via a pretty unique printing process. They look gorgeous. But they're doing some charity auctions this week, or this weekend, uh, for Black Friday um, that benefit some very good charities, uh, Wounded Warriors, um, uh, Animal... Um, there's an animal. I forget what it is. It's an it's animal. Children's and then a children, yeah, ch child's play or something like yeah. that. So um, uh, we'll get a link of that here shortly. I'll put it in the chat. But um, those cards are amazing. Okay, so if you're looking to pimp out your day. decks, check that out. You heard JB. Round three pairings coming up. He's going to bust through this door shortly. Good luck to you two gentlemen. Thank you. Thank Stick you with man. us. We'll be back here for round three shortly. And don't forget uh, the Twitter giveaway going up here in the next five minutes.